Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly discussion series that's hosted by the Chaldean Cultural Center in collaboration with U of M Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CMN TV. I'm your host, We Am Nemo, and this month we are celebrating Jewish Heritage Month. And our first guest for the month is Edith Kovensky. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm going to share your bio here, and then I'll share how we met. Um, sure. so Edith is a Hebrew poet living in Michigan and teaching at Wayne State University. Her topics are diverse and include Israeli culture, a pluralistic perspective, trends and, se and themes in Middle Eastern cinema, women poets of the Middle East, modern Hebrew, and no soil, soil old roots, the immigration experience, she is also on the editorial board of the annual literary journal, Psyphus, dedicated to Israeli and classical poetry. And Edith's 36th book, A Reality That Is Not, was just released. How exciting, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I just received it yesterday. And a version is coming out in Israel. Uh, it, not, it hasn't come out yet, but it's in the process, but this is in the American version, it came out here in America. And that's my first hard book in America, which I'm very excited about. Well, congratulations. You. Um, you know, we met through um, our vice chairperson, Asma Jamil. Mm -hmm. And um, Asma was one of your students at Wayne State University. And I guess you left a, a very uh, memorable impression on her. <laughs> um, you also helped in a way, we're doing a lot of research currently about Chaldeans. And you, um, she remembered a book that you had brought to her attention. Um, actually, she just, now I don't have it in front of me, but I'll mention it in a second, where um, there was a book by a, a Jewish author who wrote about the Chaldeans and his book that she was researching. And you and her can reconnected, and then she invited you at the Chaldean Cultural Center where um, you saw the museum and you and I had a chat. And that's when I learned about your work and was so impressed. You know, I graduated from Wayne State University and I was just so impressed with your work. And then I found out you have all these books of poetry. So, you know, we invited you. It's just so appropriate for this month. Yeah. Um, but then when we spoke, I found really an intriguing background. Um, so you were born in Romania and grew up in Israel, you know, very fascinating childhood, I'm sure. Please share that with us. Uh, well, in Romania, I was born in Romania. I was uh, very little. I don't remember. I had no. I have no recollection of my experiences there, except for my, my mother saying that I was born. I was seven months, uh, a, a seven months year old baby. Um, I almost didn't make it. Uh, she kept me. They didn't have incub incubators at the time, and so they, she kept me in cotton and on, near the stove, so to be warm. And, uh, and there was a chance that, that I won't survive, but <laughs> apparently I did. Uh, and then, then we were uh, uh, smuggled out, uh, my, my, my mother, uh, father, myself, we were smuggled out from Romania uh, just before the communists came. And uh, we uh, were detained in Cyprus by the British, uh, like the story of the Exodus. And we were there for about six months and I contracted typhus there. Um, and um, so that was my, the, the second uh, hurdle. Uh, and then in Israel, once we Israel was declared a state, we came to Israel, and I contracted TB. So in my the first uh, four or five years of my life, um, uh, there was uh, some kind of a um, uh, troubles, the obstacles, actually that. Uh, that somehow I made through it, uh, but my memorable in Israel, my memorable, uh, my me my memorable experience, or the major experience that I, besides the schooling and everything, and the neighborhood that I lived in, uh, very diverse. I heard languages, people from all over, not only Jewish people but also Arab people, and uh, we were neighbors, and there were no problems. I I, I grew up with a with. Uh, in, in, in peace and in uh, co collaboration with, with, with and living well with all, all my neighbors, uh, all our neighbors. And, but the, the most memorable uh, 
experience was my army, uh, being in the army, Israeli army for, um, instead of 24 months, I was there for 20 months. They reduced, this is just the first time that they reduced the service for girls. I don't know how, what they did for boys, but for girls, four months. And that was faithful. That's why I'm mentioning it, because that was extremely faithful. And, uh, and then I'll tell you why um, later on. So, um, and the army was important to me. Uh, there was peaceful time uh, at, at those years, uh, six, 63, 65. Uh, and um, the army was important to me because it taught me, taught me to... Um, get over obstacles, it taught me responsibility, teamwork, uh, it hardened me, it hardened me for life. Uh, I don't think that I would have made it here in America uh, without this experience behind me. So this is the second tell you about my uh, my experiences, my early experiences. Uh, so how many, um, were you the only, the only child? I was the only child, you yeah. Were the only child. Couldn't there anymore kids. She hardly had me. I was, I was seven months so, so And I then you gave her such a hard time. That she, <laughs> and you were she, was, she was wonderful. She was so dedicated. She was so she 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 helped she cured me. And also in Cyprus was a, a English I didn't mention it was a, an English doctor who actually took me to the to private quarters because I had a very high fever. I probably would have would have perished. Uh, in the regular ward and she actually saved my life and then before my mother boarded the ship to go to uh, israel she said well you, you, you you're going to there'll be hard times and hard things i'll take her to england with me and uh and um, i'll adopt her and she'll have a good life and so on but my mother of course and you are young you can have more children that's what she told my mom but uh, my mother of course she would she refused and here i am because my, my life would have been totally different. Yeah, I would have written. I would probably wouldn't written, wouldn't written Hebrew Hebrew poetry. Yeah. And and so um you uh, in Israel at a after high school is when you serve. Yes, your, it, it, your it's, a, it's mandatory. It's mandatory unless you are um, of a, a, a religious background that is checked. You cannot just say that, or if you uh, medical reasons. Mm -hmm. or if you have to support your family, let's say, if they depend on you, yeah. And so when did you start, when did you move to the United States? And well, I, did you start poetry before you moved here or after? No, no I never wrote poetry. I never thought poetry, about poetry. I think when I was, actually, when I was eight years old, there was a woman poet, uh, Leah Goldberg, that actually I'm, I'm teaching, uh, that that impressed me, but I just read her. But I never thought that I would do this, this you know, the same. Uh, uh, I started writing in my mid thirties, so that's late. Um, after I finished, actually, I uh, I majored in uh, French literature. I took my PhD exams in French literature, and Hebrew was actually my minor, and and uh, we needed and a cognate was German. And um, and I and I took a, a Hebrew. The Hebrew at Wayne wasn't wasn't was weak at the time, and so I took a year of uh, uh, courses at uh, University of Michigan at U of M for the for the um, preparation for the exams. So uh, so I started late. I started late, and I never thought I would come to America. Uh, when I was in the army, my 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 certificate was already in Jerusalem at the Hebrew U. And what happened, because that's why I mentioned, because because they shortened the service by four months. So I finished um, the, my military service in July. My father, who was working, he was an officer in the Zim, it still exists, the Zim shipping company, Israeli shipping company. It still exists today. And, um, and today it's, it's more um, the merchant, it's more 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 cargo. And, uh, but anyways, he came home and he says, I have one more trip to the Great Lakes where he met his brother here and, uh, and then family. And he said, if you want to come uh, after the army, a lot of kids, if you have, they, they have the opportunity, they go for, for a trip, uh, they go on trips. So he took me and my mom on the ship and we arrived to, uh, right here in Detroit River. I actually got off the boat, literally, <laughs> literally. 
So then I did, uh, then they uh, I stayed with you know, the, the ship left and they had to leave for ten for ten days. They went to Chicago and then they went to to Canada to to Hamilton and they they stayed there. They had cargo there. So I had ten days to decide whether I should I want to stay in America, and I decided to to give it a chance. So here I am. My journey continues. It hasn't ended. Yeah. And you, uh, you know, I, I want to go, not only has it, it hasn't ended, you're still, you're so productive as a writer <laughs> um, and in your teachings, um, very, very active and you've authored 36 books. So I, I want to ask you what inspires your productivity, but also first, uh, you know, I want to ask about you describing yourself as a Hebrew poet. How has that, um, how has your Jewish heritage impacted your identity and influenced your writing? Yeah, uh, that, that that's interesting. I remember that I studied, you know, French literature for many, many years and uh, all my life, actually. Uh, so um, and so I never thought I would write uh, poetry, number one, and I never thought I would write it in Hebrew. Uh, so so I would say that my poetry is because of that. Um, so I have two backgrounds in a way. I have this this universal general background, and and I have the Jewish background, and it does it it did impact, and it does impact my poetry. Uh, but as a whole, I would think that the poetry is the right is existential and universal, and it applies to all of us. I think each and one of us can identify with the themes that I write, I write about the, actually the greed of life. I, I, I write about relationships. I write about, you know, hopes and loves and disappointments and, and dreams and so on. So we, that we all share. Uh, so, so um, but maybe there is a Jewish, I would say maybe a cadence or a, a nigun, in, as they say in Hebrew, a, a chant. Uh, a sort of uh, chant that is go, is going through the uh, the verses, and um, specifically, and you can see it by the title of the books that most of the titles are not specifically Jewish titles. But I have two books that I did uh, um, dedicate: one uh, Jerusalem poems, and the other one poems of the Holocaust. But, but throughout the poetry, there's also God. I'm also addressing a God, a, a divine. Um, so I speak to him and he speaks to me, uh, but not in a necessarily religious sense, but for me, he is a, a totality, uh, maybe that we're lacking him here down on earth, a, 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 a wholeness, a power that, that that sometimes I in the, I cling to in the poetry, and I talk to it, I and I talk intimately to him uh, in, in a com comfortably way, comfortable way, um, and there are times that he talks to me. So that that God is there, even in the, this poem, this new book that I have. Uh, somehow, I, and I also feel that that uh, perhaps the grace of God gives me this ability to do what I'm doing, which I didn't plan to do. Yeah, at all. Well, so, and, and I want to mention, I, I'd love if you could read a few poems for us, but I would, I want to mention too, before you do that, um, that, you know, your poetry, um, have they all been translated? Most have been translated translated from Hebrew to English, yeah. um, Hebrew to French, uh, to Arabic. Um, so for the most, yeah. Yes. So that, that was that's very wonderful. And the fact that you can reach so much of an audience and, you know, most poetry that I've read is, or the good one anyway, is very universal. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you, if you don't mind, if you can read a few poems for us, that would be sure. so lovely. Sure. Well, I put, um, because of the time constraint, uh, I pick, I pick two poems. One poem is from uh, the book Jerusalem, Jerusalem poem that was published in 1996. And, it's called wall, and I and I and I in Hebrew it's kotel, and the kotel is the wailing wall in Jerusalem, but the translator translated it as wall. So here you'll see that really God speaks to me, and, and I started the verse like that. Uh, God speaks to me among quick words, 
warming a day of scattered rain, falling opposite words, whispering love, exactly as in a round night, close to primeval pain, written on the wall, descending in shallow time. Why have I all these thoughts? Facing a bus ascending the street, rolling a poem on dark asphalt, among words enfolding to a lovely language of the moment, like an ancient dirge and a silent shadow turning among domes and arches and crowded people and stone. So this is my poem, yeah, this is my, this yes. is my, my poem, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I would read one more from my book that I just received uh, yesterday. <laughs> it happened to be, I had a copy um, uh, from the publisher before, so I could have used that too, but this is the actual book. And I picked again to connect it to Jewish uh, uh, theme. I picked the, the poem that is the title Tikkun. Tikkun in Hebrew uh, or in Jewish thought is um, repair. And it refers to uh, repair of the world and how do we repair, can we repair the world is by good deeds. And so uh, in this poem, um, there's also a repair, but here I repair words. And maybe this repair, this pair of words, uh, maybe can contribute to the repair of of the world uh, in a, in a, in, a, in the macro sense, in the bigger sense, and maybe in the mini sense, it maybe helps to repair my my inner self. And so, so this is the poem, Tikkun. There is something in this poem, like the fear of the dark rolling among the puddles of words, crowded into the corridor of night and love breaking in me, careful in tune. And I repair words, quick in the wind, blasting from star to star in a potential dream, trapping my love alive in the glory of the moment, like a flower of fantasy and like a muse giving me poem after poem. And then I talk to God, bound in the lofty discourse, twirling with greatest temptation, fading in dissonant things, melding in a sun revealing fantasy, wandering in the thicket of light, becoming as if from childhood. So this is Tikkun, <laughs> this is Tikkun. And of course I don't analyze my poems. So, you know, we, we could have had the whole show just listening to your poetry. <laughs> it's so lovely. Anytime, and, you know, any, anytime I would love to share. And, and I want you just to share, um, I want to move on to the next question, but really uh, this is it's such a lovely day for us to be celebrating the month because also you mentioned to me, I, I wasn't aware that today is you Jerusalem. Jerusalem Day, yes. Today it's Jerusalem Day. Day. So, so, yeah. Oh, what a blessing, you know, exactly. what a blessing that we have that. It's such um, a coincidence. That's a beautiful coincidence. It's a beautiful coincidence, yes. And and then, you know, since you mentioned your poems and, and God and this coincidence, <laughs> it, all, it all matches. <laughs> um, so, you know, your teachings um, at Wayne State University, uh, tell us about your teaching career when you started there, and what did what were, did you start teaching originally? Um, and some and what's going on today? Like how has that? Um, how is your teachings influencing the students, especially those of Middle Eastern backgrounds? Yes, yes, um, and and I do have diverse diverse students uh, teach diverse classes and diverse students, and I love them both, both the students and what I teach. I started in 1987. And as um, as a as I was starting, I started to write poetry, but I, they called me. I didn't think about even teaching at Wayne. Everything is had that is had good that happened to me. I didn't think about. 
that it will happen. Um, I, uh, I got a call that one of the professors is uh, going on a sabbatical, the one that teaches Hebrew, if I would come for one uh, semester. That there was the semester of the winter of 87. And I was so thrilled. I was so happy even to teach one semester. So I went and uh, I don't know what I did. I, I didn't care for the, the text that was used. Uh, but so I gathered whatever I had, I had. And remember, remember, I was in French. So, but I still, I had, I have a library of, of Hebrew books and a bigger library you can imagine since then. Uh, but, but I gathered whatever I had and I thought, and I don't know what I did actually, <laughs> uh, and I, but I, I guess the students loved it and they wrote a petition, uh, made a petition for me to come back. And this is, and then in the fall I came back. Uh, in the winter I was, uh, I didn't, and I was in Israel. And after that, um, uh, and the, the the chair of when I was in Israel, the chair happened to be there too, and he came for my poetry reading. I went to Israel because my first book came out, in, um, Small Blessings, uh, or my second, Syncopations, because it was eighty-seven. Yeah. So, um, anyways, he was there. He was. He came to my reading, and after that, uh, I was hired um, in the following fall, and I'm I'm there since then. I didn't plan on it. There was supposed to be one semester. <laughs> so, and the former professor who taught there, I mean, he was a historian, so he didn't care that much about the the, the, the Hebrew. And uh, so every time, but every time he saw me, he saw me in the corridor, he said, he went like this, one semester. <laughs> and the one semester became what? How many years? Over 30 years. Yes. Oh, wow. So yeah. And I developed it because they didn't have, they only had, in fact, there was a rabbi that was teaching uh, there. And I don't know if he might have taught religious Hebrew and uh, biblical Hebrew, I mean. And uh, I developed, I developed uh, the modern Hebrew literature. I added, you know, the, 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 the um, also poetry I'm teaching today, poetry, poetry of the Middle East, not only women, uh, Israeli poets, but also poets from the Arab world, including from Iraq. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, the story, you know, it's easy to believe because, as I mentioned, that our vice chairperson, Asma, who uh, introduced yes. me to you. So she said, she first of all, she just was very influenced and she remembered you so well. And she said, you know, if you sit with her, you don't, <laughs> you can just keep going on and on and conversing. Yeah, but she remembered. Yeah, but years later, she recalled, um, as I said, we were doing research about Chaldeans, and she recalled, and I brought up the book that she remembers you bringing up, A Provocative People, A Secular History of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, I remembered her mentioning it and what it had in it, and then she did some research, and um, the author talks about the Chaldeans. So um, this is really how good professors, teachers, and, and not, not just professors, any teaching, it's it really uh, when it comes from the heart and the way it's brought forth, it sticks to the students to where today, what you mentioned for her, we're using that as part of the, our research uh, yeah. project. So yeah. thank you so much. So your presence at Wayne State is very, very important, um, especially given the community that's here in Michigan. And that was gonna, that's what I was gonna talk about next is, um, so you live in West Bloomfield, a city that has the second largest population of Chaldeans in Michigan. Um, there are many Chaldean American students at Wayne State University. I mean, and th there's just a, a very large Arab American community in general in, in the state of Michigan. Um, but uh, what have you learned about this community through your interactions with them? Yeah. Uh, well, for, uh, through my students, uh, I've I learned, that they, uh, first of all, they're very hardworking. Uh, they're very diligent, like uh, Asma was. And, and, uh, and I felt that also they're very close to their community. The community, the family, community means a lot to them. Uh, and they also very proud of their heritage. And then I learned, especially also when I visited the youth center, that you are you striving and you keep striving to preserve uh, this heritage. And I I respect it an awful lot because this is what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, Jewish people too, uh, uh, all people I think I think people try to 
but uh, you but I felt this this uh, this big um, the energy that goes into uh, uh, keeping and uh, making your your heritage be known and 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 be stable and be with us and uh, and I saw uh, I saw the museum and I was impressed and uh, so I so I learned a lot and then I, all the Chaldeans I meet they were also very friendly uh, to me and they don't they, you know they know that they know I'm Israeli they know I'm Jewish but uh, in fact I just met some people not too long ago. Uh, um, um, as well, the, the uh, there is a rapport, there is a chemistry. Well, a yeah, there, there's a lot of the similarities uh, yeah. that that we share, but the fact that the what we have endured, and the Jewish community having uh, been having escaped all of that and rebuilt themselves before us. So we've learned quite a bit from the Jewish community. And I have found that anytime I've reached out with any kind of question or in need of anything, they're always available to help. Yeah. That's you no, know, most people are in general, but, but there's that deeper, I think the connection of having been yeah. repressed, uh, you know, pushed out of our ha homelands or, or having gone through genocides or whatever, there is that commonality and that creates a greater compassion and sympathy, I think, which is exactly. part of human nature, you know, yes. for that to happen. Yes. And actually, Abraham came from Ur. Ur and Kadim. Abraham came from Ur, and Jesus was Jewish, and there's on and on. And the oh. Aramaic language, I mean, if yeah. we were to do a book on the similarities, yeah. we, we'd have a pretty thick book or a, a volume of that. Exactly. And even the Chaldean language, you know, we have, I think, the Hebrew month, I think they're similar in Chaldean, uh, you know, like Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, you know, they are the same. I mean, I just threw, like, one of my recent discoveries I had told you is Ariel Sabars, who's going to be our guest for next week um when i read his book my father's paradise i had no clue that there was uh kurdish jews so and then that their aramaic is just like ours and i thought oh my goodness you know so we, this is why it's so much fun to continue learning about other communities because exactly. you you exactly. learn about the differences and then through those differences you end up learning about so, so much similarity i agree 100 it's really wonderful I agree. so um you know one what has been your career sounds lovely. I mean, being a poet of that many books and teaching and you have all the like what looks very prestigious yeah, yeah. and very lovely lifestyle. Still going, what, strong. Still going strong. <laughs> still going strong. So but what was what has been your greatest challenge in your career path? Uh I think uh, well, the immediate challenge, especially at Wayne, was the building the program. And um, and I have to say the the administration always oh I always always agreed with the courses that I want to teach, and uh, and so that that I'm thankful to, to that. So that was a challenge. Uh, but the bigger ch challenge was to how to balance my responsibilities to to school you know to to teaching and my right and, and the writing and then my family so not to neglect one um, or the other and i don't know i think sometimes i succeeded sometimes maybe i failed um, uh, because writing and teaching is my life and uh, but so that was really my biggest challenge and i hope uh, that that i somehow succeeded in in uh, in bridging between these two separate worlds, yeah, not only in localities, not only geographically, but uh, uh, but uh, but also otherwise uh, uh, responsibility-wise. Or uh, I hope that my family didn't feel neglected, or that, that you know that I gave all my love to my students and not. Uh, and not well, it's it's uh, never gonna yeah. No matter what you give to everything, they want more anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's never they would probably would want to have to have a little bit more but it seems like you're a very compassionate person and i think that um i, I try i try there yeah. i and i don't know i try it, it's instinctively uh because i get those feedbacks from the students and i don't really you know i i, I don't see myself doing those things but i guess i do and i if i remember that even my daughter wanted to be in my class 
and she actually joined. She she uh, she did her undergraduate school at uh, Indiana. Then she moved to uh, to Michigan, and she went to. She wanted. I didn't think she would want to be where I am, uh, but she wanted to be. And she and she came. She took Hebrew as a foreign language. <laughs> So was, your, your impact is is there yeah, definitely. It was, it was in my classroom, and and she it, she she studied fair and square, and it was uh, it was very objective. I tried to be very objective. So we have like a minute left, okay. and it's um, it's the last question that I have is what's right. next for you? What's oh. your next project? Okay, what so I mean, it was really fast in a minute. The there is an in a, a forward in this new book. Uh, um, a reality that is not uh, by my uh, former translator um, who I worked with him over 20 years and he used to write beautiful, beautiful prefaces or, or forwards to the books and they, they were short but like I think they were gems. He said, he said important things and very strange, strong things and very dense. So what I would like to do next is to I have a book um, of, of all his prefaces and uh, actually, I can I can show I have some notes on it because uh, that, that's the, that I just prepared. Um, so this is the book that with all these prefaces includes all these prefaces. Uh, as, as I said, they are short and not uh, for all the from all the books. Uh, that's from from 1992 to two, I think two or five twenty. Yeah, uh, 20, 2005. So I will. What I like to do is uh, expand this because he says such important things, and add poet poems to that. To the you know, for each preface, I want to add poet poems from the books he's talking about, and to and uh, publish it. Maybe also new 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 a section of new poems and publish it. So that's my next project. Well, we look forward to your whatever work you do. And I also look forward to visiting with you again because it was so lovely. And we did say, you know, we need to meet again. Same. So that's in the works. Thank you so much for joining us sure. today. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful Jerusalem day. It's a blessed day. <laughs> We're going to go and enjoy it. It's beautiful weather outside. Thank you Thank very you. much. Oh, here's somebody that said, loved hearing and watching this and meeting Edith. Thank you, Zelka. This is um, Zelka Joseph is actually a um, um, she's of Jewish background and from India, and she's a she's a dear friend and she's a poet. Uh huh. Zelka Joseph, yes. Okay. So yes. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you were able to join us, Zelka. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, and thank you for all the listeners. And I hope that that I I uh, I. I did well. I'm not sure. Yes, it was it was it was wonderful hearing you and hearing your experience. Yeah, it's very yeah. rich experience. And thank you for your poetry as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. And if you want to listen to it anytime, I'm ready. Yes, yes. We'll have you at the cultural center one day. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody.